Page 11a, Bishlama de Beit Hillel. So, just to give a background, the Mishnah said at the very end of 10b, a machloket between Beit Shama and Beit Hillel. Beit Shama yomrim ba'erev kol adam yateh ve'ikrao ba'boker ya'amol shenemaru b'shoch v'charav kumecha. Um, there is a machloket, there is different opinion between Beit Hillel and Beit Shama in regards to Shema. Um, according to Beit Shammai, um, we have to read the Shema the way that the letter is written there. And therefore, when you read the Shema in the evening, every person should, in a sense, lay down a little bit. Um, because it's written, Beshoch Becha, when you lay down. And, uh, and they said, Uba Bokri Amod, and, and, and in order to do Bekumecha, when you stand up, a person should stand up when he says Shema. And Beit Hillel, they said, regardless if it's night or day, everybody should read the way that it's convenient for him. Because they said, the Mir explained, not necessarily when he's, he is aside or standing, it's whatever, it's a, yeah, whichever it's a, um, um, proper at that uh, time. So then the Mishnah asked him, So why they said when you lie down on the stand? If you said that whatever it is possible, so they said that's usually expressed the time measurement, the time, which is That's the time that people usually lie down or stand up. Even Rabbi Tarfon himself was from Beit Hillel, but he tried to be stricted more than uh, than needed in that sense, so he tried to to follow Beit Shammai. And as a result, when you imagine if a person, for example, riding a donkey, and he tried to lay down on a donkey while the donkey is moving, right? Just to fulfill the idea of lay down. So, I'm not so sure if he has a full focusing and a full intent. So in that sense, it was all kind of... Uh, yeah, robbers and then people on the way so he lay down and it, it, it engendered himself that um, in a sense you can um, basically endanger yourself and can even risk your life soon you explain what does that mean so the Gemara said <coughs> If, according to Beit Hillel, all is well, because they elucidate both their own reasoning, which means they, and they respond to the reasoning of, of Beit Shammai. But this regard of Beit Shammai, why they don't say like Beit Hillel? So, when you say the verse, when you lie down, when, when you arise, so Beit Hillel, this, uh, they, they, again, they speak about the time of recitation of Shema. So the, the Torah should say in the morning and in the evening. Why you need to say when you lay down when you rise? So it has to have a reason. So they said Bishat Shchiva, Shchiva Mamash. When you lie down, it's it's really actual line require. Or Bishat Kima in the time of arising, Kima Mamash. It's a actual uh, standing is required. So that's the reason why you don't say in the morning and the evening. Maya Vedlo. So so um Bait Shamai Habilah Techabaderh Maya Vedlo. So how Bait Shamai interpreted when you walk on your way, going on your way, what did they explain it? How mi bailh the tanya. The reason they said it's for another reason, because it's written Bishiv Techabitecha Prat Lao Sek Bimitzva. The Torah said uh, when you you are in your uh, house, when you're sitting in your home, it's a uh, excluding for person who occupied in the mitzvah. As soon you see what is that uh, mitzvah that he is uh, exempt from Shema. And uh, um, you're doing, you go on the way. It's excluding the bridegroom. Why? Because he is um, fulfilling the, the other mitzvah. Because um, uh, soon you see the difference between married first time and married widow. But mikanam um, from here we learn hakones et habetula patu vet almana chayav one who is the first time married then he's free from shma because he's um, involved with the mitzvah of marrying but almana if someone is already married someone who is a widow 
So it's not the first time, um, um, uh, first stage of their life. Um, and therefore, um, he is obligated to say Shema, which means the idea of freeing a person for Shema, there are certain rare circumstances, like involved with death, like involved with the first time marriage, and things like that. My Mashma, what we derive, what is implied for engaging from the Mizna, Mish, Mitzvah does not recite the Shema, Amar of Papa, of Papa said, Ki Derech, this um, on the way, which means the word on the way, it's the, um, is comparable to way. What does that mean? Ma derech reshut. That justice ones travel upon the way uh, are uh, for his uh, discretionary purposes. Of course, reshut. So any other activity, it's a, it's a optional. One um, uh, engage with the mitzvah. Um, uh, it's a, in in a sense, it's an optional. So. Um, but if someone who is engaged in mitzvah like a bridegroom, so he's a free from the other. Milo askina de ka'azel et var mitzvah v'afilu ache amar rachman alikre. But uh, are we not dealing with a verse that can also imply that he's going for an, an, an mitzvah matter, which means it's an obligation. V'afilu ache amar rachman alikre. And even though the, the, the God said that, uh, that he must say shema, im ken lichtov rachman ha b'shevet tu velechet, so they said the 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 pasuk should say when you uh, while you're sitting or while you're walking. My beshivtecha beuvlechtecha. What does that mean? Doing you sitting and doing you going. Beshevedidach uvelechedidach who the mechayvat. It's going to teach you that when you occupied with your sitting and when you're going, you're obligated to stop and say shema. But ha the mitzvah petirat. But it's an obligation of a of a mitzvah. You are free from uh, from reciting Shema. Yachah filu koneset almana nami. So if you tell me that someone is engaged in, in mitzvah, is free from others. So if someone marry a widow, it's also uh, should be exempt from from uh, from uh, performing the mitzvah. So they said high tree by lottery. This one is so preoccupied that uh, we, we show free him from the others. But the high lottery, but one is Mary Widow, is not so concentrating and so not so occupied uh, with other things, so he can focus when he says Shema, because part of the fulfillment of Mitzvah Shema is to focus with the words and understand, and, and deeply understand. If you worry about someone who is preoccupied with other things, so since if someone is on on the on this boat, right? That forbidden those boat is about to sink in the sea. So you say that it's also free from there. And if you say that that's indeed so, we say that the mourner is obligated for all the mitzvot. Usually um, in our language, in our time, mourners apply to one of these two stages. Either is onen one who lost his loved one and is a pre-preparations before death. Oh, we talk of the first day after the uh, burial, that uh, they said that the mourner is obligated in all the commandments, said in Torah, exempt from the mitzvot feeling, because the feeling called glory, you should put yourself um, in the glory, which applied to the feeling, so, so even the, um, the mourner is so preoccupied with so much agony, right? But he also obligated to all mitzvot, including the Shema. So, so it means that if someone is preoccupied with something, he's not free from the obligation of Shema. So why, if someone marry first time, is exempt from Shema? They said, Hatam tarid tirda de mitzvah, acha tarid tirda derashut. If someone marry first time, he has experienced preoccupation with the mitzvah, which is the marriage itself and the whole the engagement of married life. It's a mitzvah. Here, in the case of murder, it's the uh, it's different. He he can set aside the whole idea of shema. And uh, some example you take um, uh, Professor Viktor Frankl. Remember we discussed his book. Um, um, uh, man in the search of meaning that he was in a concentration camp but he was able to uh, mentally um, exempt himself from being in a, such an environment and focus 
um, uh, in his mind in different locations, in that sense he will be able to survive. So in, the, in the, no comparison, but the whole idea is that the person, if he set his mind to focus on Shema, even in the state of, of uh, um, all kind of different state of mind, he can focus on saying Shema, or Beit Shemai. So how is the Beit Shemai derive the, 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 the phrase upon the way? <coughs> right? Uh, um, they, how they uh, express it. So they said, Ahumi Bayale Liprat Lishluche Mitzvah. They interpreted the whole idea of Lechtecha Baderech upon the way that's applied to people who are sent for performing mitzvah. For example, if someone is sent to free a, 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 um, a prisoner, uh, you know, that in the Jewish history they took a, a captives and they want a lot of money in exchange. So if someone was sent involved in that mitzvah, so exempt from a recitation de Shema. Ubetilel Amrei, and now Ubetilel, how they um, explain it, they said, Mimela Shema Mina, da filu baderech nami kari. They said that um, the whole idea of the um, uh, learning from the uh, one who is a travel, a play, a, a, a travel, blechtecha baderech, upon the way, he re recite the Shema even as he walks. Uh, um, so even baderech, even that he is. Uh, um, he goes um, uh, on his way, he still is still uh, saying it. So you see here the, um, the two she taught, the, the one the school of thought of Shammai and one school of Tilel when it's come to Lech Techa Baderech. Tanu Rabbanan, Bet Tilel Omrim, Omdin Vekorim, Yoshvin Vekorim, Omatin Vekorim, Olchin Baderech Vekorim, Osin Bim Lachtan Vekorim. Bet Tilel said that you can recite the Shema while you are um, doing a lot of other things. For example, while you're standing, you can say Shema, while you're sitting, um, while you lie down, while you're doing all kind of other jobs, you can do Shema. Umaseh Rabbi Ishmael Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah, Shayu Mesubim Makum Echad, the story about these rabbis that they're involved with a certain resting in a certain place at night. Vaya Rabbi Ishmael, Mute Rabbi Lazar, Zakuf, that Rabbi Ishmael was lying down, Rabbi Lazar ben Azariah uh, was uh, standing. Right? Kevan she gives man kriyat shema. When the time to say shema, he tar Rabbi Yezer v'zavkav Rabbi Shmuel. One rabbi is lay down, and another rabbi was standing up. Amar Rabbi Lazar ben Lazar Rabbi Shmuel. One rabbi said to the other, Yishmael achi, my brother Yishmael. I'm sure the Hamashal emar the word me. You know what it looks like? He says, I give you a comparable, a comparison. Amar la Hamashal laachad shomrim lo zgancha megudalif. He said to someone, Oh. Look at uh, your beard. Your beard is uh, beautiful, beautifully uh, full. Amar lahem, he replied to them in, in spite, and he said, "Ye keneged amishmashchitim. Let it be, let it be giving to the destroyers." So it means that uh, Rashi explained, um, "Let it be to the destroyer." He said, "Mashal shalcha adome laachrim shomrim." לא זכנחה יהיה מגודל ואומר להם הואיל וקילסתם אותו אף הוא יהיה כנגד המשחיתים הגדול הזה יהיה נתון לתר ולמספריים שאביא עליו והשחיתנו which means uh, to the razor and the scissors since you have praised the beard I will destroy you right? you know people like that they get even so אף כך אתה the same as you כל זמן שאני זקוף אתה מוטה as long as I'm standing and you have lie down, uh, you lie down. Achshav kshani teti ata zakafta. And now when I lay down, you have straightened up. So when I pay you a, uh, a compliment for emulating you, you immediately change your position. Amar lo, as Rabbi Shmuel said to him, Afani asidi kedivir betilel. I also did a mitzvah according to betilel. Right? That what did they said? The halacha that you can do it any way you wish to. But you did according to Beit Shammai, and not more. But the Shammai gave the Talmidim and gave the halacha to the Dorot. But I fear that that the students, that the disciples, they see both lie down and they think that that's the the ruling, right? And they make the halacha for generation to come. So therefore, I straightened up. So, so, uh, to, so as to counteract to this uh, um, uh, erroneous impression. My Lord, what does that mean? And not only that, the, the first explanation. So he said, Maybe you said that in Betil agree that it's also you should lie down when you say Shema. 
Honey me le demate veata mi cara this apply only when you are lie down uh, from the start of alhaha ke van da ashta ave za kirf ve ave mute but since you erect until now and have lie down until now amresh mamina ke bet shamai svira lo so you understand that this is according to bet shamai shamai wrote and dimi kvu al hadro that we don't want the students to make this as a yeah, future uh, ruling tana de rabbi khazkel Asa kedivre Beit Shammai, Asa. Kedivre Beit Hillel, Asa. One who performed the mitzvah, uh, the way of Beit Shammai, he did what he did. Or someone in Beit Hillel, Rabbi Yosef Amar, Asa kedivre Beit Shammai, lo Asa velo chlum. Rabbi Yosef said, no, 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 no. If someone followed Beit Shammai, which should not follow the halacha, it's like he did nothing. It's not the proper way to do it. With none, I can prove it from a different um, um, uh, uh, source. It says, Mishai roshov rubo v'sakoa v'shulchano betoch habayit. If it's a person of a small sukkah, if you go to those places that, like, you go to New York in some places, you have a huge residential buildings, you have it also in uh, other places in the world, and the people need to build the, the, the sukkah, they have no spot because the balcony is very small. So what happens is some people have the, the entire body in the sukkah, but since the balcony is so small, so it turns that he is at the table, it's in the house, which means just the head is in the sukkah. So Beit Shammai Puslim, Beit Shammai ruled that the, the Sukkah is invalid, that he may not eat this manna doing Sukkot. But Beit Hillel said it the valid, so he didn't allow to eat in that way in Sukkot. He said to Beit Shammai, he said to Beit Shammai, he said to Beit Shammai, it is a story that the elder of both, house, elder of a house of Shammai and the elder of house Beit Hillel went to visit a great rabbi, his name is Rabbi Yochanan Ben Achoranit. They found out that he's in that circumstance, that he's a small sukkah, and his head and, and, um, and um, his body is in a sukkah, but the table, it's in the house. And you see that they didn't comment on that. They let it go. They said, ah, that's not the proof. The, 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 the same way that the, they said to Rabbi Yochanan ben Achonitim, Ken ha'ita noeg lo kiyamnu mitzvah tzukam yamecha. If that's the way you, you do that, that you never fulfill the mitzvah of sukkah in your life. Which means, we see that according to Beit Shammai, one who follows the view of Beit Hillel is not considering uh, to have fulfilled the mitzvah. So, in regard to one who follows the view of Beit Shammai, according, uh, uh, according to Beit Hillel, is not fulfilling the mitzvah if you do something according to Beit Shammai. So we go back to the whole idea of Rabbi Tarfon reciting Shema while he is moving his body in such a way that he endangers himself. Rabbi Nachman Bar Yitzchak Amar, Asakre Dure Bishmai Chayav Mita. Woo hoo hoo. He said someone who did a uh, in his he deliberately, deliberately the Ritva explained deliberately lie down or to a Shema. He is uh, in a sense um, can be liable to death, which means he can. People can kill that person. The Tnan Amar Rabbi Tarfon, Rabbi Tarfon said, "I need to be by the Rebbe to look at the Rebbe Shemay Vizikan to be listed as him." I was on my way, as the Mishnah said, and I endangered myself because uh, there are people who are can be attack me on the, the you know robbers, all kind of people. Amulo kedayit alachovas mechad. They said that uh, you are befitting to have come to harm yourself. Why? Shabbat al Rebbe Tila, because you are deliberately lie down for the Shema. So basically you transgress the word of Beit Hillel. So we see that one who, who follow Beit Shammai is in a sense, um, they call it in our language, deserve a death because he's basically in danger himself is in a such a way. So let's just conclude the Mishnah. We said that, that, that the Mishnah, and you see it at the other session, the other side of this page, 11, we're about to finish 11a, but 11b you have it in the, in the separate session. So the Mishnah said, Bashachar Mvarech Shtayim Lefanea Ve'achat Lacharea ובערב מברך שתיים לפניה ושתיים לאחריה, אחת ארוכה ואחת קצרה. מקום שאמרו להאריך אינו רשע לקצר, לקצר אינו רשע להאריך, לחתום אינו רשע שלא לחתום, שלא לחתום, שלא לחתום. So just introduction for the, the other session, the Mishnah speaks about the morning and the evening prayer. So if you look carefully at the, the set in the morning and the evening prayer, you see that after we said Baruch we said Yotze Or Vorech Horshech, and then we said Baruch Atah Hashem Yotze Amorot, that's a long bracha. And then you have Ahava Rabba or Ahava Tolam, uh, and then what Bukhar Bamo Israel Bava, that's compared to the others, is relatively short. So you have two blessings, but one is long, one is short. And then you have in the evening, uh, before the Shema, two short, right? Because you said Baruch Hashem Asher Bidvoro, Baruch Hashem Aravim, right? Ahavat Olam, 
and then Oheba Mo Yisrael, it's both short, and then afterward you have the different way, because afterward in the morning you have the long one until Baruch Hatash and Gal Yisrael, and in the evening you have one long and one short, which is one is Baruch Hatash and Gal Yisrael after Mikamocha, and then you have the Ashkiveinu that is short. So they said here, um, the place that the sages institute that it's long, you cannot make it short. And the place that the institute is short, you cannot make it long. The place that you have Baruch Ato Hashem, you cannot, um, 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 you know, short, cut it short and remove the, the blessing, but bless are you Hashem. And the place that you don't have the seal of Baruch Ato Hashem, like there are some end of paragraph without that seal, you cannot change. In other words, the decom of the prayer, some long, some short, it's institute in such a way that it's a formulation that is like piece of art. I always quote my Rebbe who used to say that um, when you have, a, um, for example, p uh, the painting of the Three Musketeers, right? So you see this painting, you cannot come to the gallery or the museum and say, oh, I don't like one of the mustache, let me cut it, let me temper with that. You can't do it because it's a piece of art. It's like you're taking music of Beethoven or Bach and you cannot say, oh, I don't like this phrase, let's take it out. The same applied to the prayer. The sages institute and surgeon the comb of prayer, and a person cannot temper and change it in any way you want to. So in that sense, whenever it's long, it has to stay in that way, or in, in whatever it's a sealed of name of Hashem, it has to stay in that decorum. That's the Mishnah. I like, la 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 la